Merry two days before Christmas. Uh, Shaggy SoCal Tool for Forza uh, with the next track guide for uh, the TNT season in this Bentley GT3. Um, good race last night. Uh, I, I could have been a bit more patient, uh, especially early on. Uh, I, I think it's just because this car is sometimes somewhat difficult to get around the track. And again, we're all running very close lap times. It's really tough to, to set up a pass. Anyhow, enough about my questionable racecraft. But uh, next race is at Hockenheim Ring on the on the full on the full circuit. As far as I know, it's going to be clear. Uh, I didn't see anything on the spreadsheet that that indicated Matt might make this a rain race. I, I, I I'm hoping it's it it's no rain. But in any case, uh, I've only done maybe three or four laps just to kind of get a, an idea uh, of what's uh, of what to do. So this is I'm, I'm going to be learning this track as as much as I'm going to be telling you what I'm doing. So uh, again, we'll start out. I'll do a couple of, of flyers kind of talking at just a high level there as I'm going around the track, what I'm doing, what I'm looking at, and I'll break it down. I'll do a, a slower lap around, you know, corner by corner. If you've seen my previous ones at the Hockenheim, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to say anything very different as far as what I'm doing or what to look for. So, um, but it just might be the, weird things that this car will do as opposed to some of the other ones we've raced here. Uh, and then I'll do a, a mock race with what I think is going to be about a half distance of what we'll run on Thursday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll look at the time at the end and, and go from there. So with that, I'm going to stop talking here in the pit lane. Let's go ahead and do a test drive and start running a few laps here. So The turn one here, uh, again, this is going to be very fast. This is going to be, and again, cold tires pushing a little bit. That's going to be a third gear corner. Coming up here, braking just at the access road. And the second, now I differ from the braking line. I'm going to keep it to the right here a little bit to the green. And that opens this turn up a little bit. Less likely to get wheel spin or have traction control kick in. Um, Play around with that, uh, but you got to be smooth through your turn in, or you know, the back end will get a little loose. Uh, braking here, brake right where the curbing starts. I've been doing this in second. You could do it in first, but then you're going to have to upship really quickly. And yeah, at least for right now, I am not running traction control. Bring it out here. Start to turn in when you get to the curbing. Break right at the end of that curbing. Oh, I got a little late there. Down to second. Let's be third, I think. Third, quick off the brake. Just let the car roll in. Roll back in. And car out here. Use the curbing. Play chicken with the wall. You turn your quick brake right at the wall and turn in. Leave it in fourth. Back on the gas. Now, I usually look at where the loose tire bundle starts as well. There on the right. Um, you can do this in second or third. I like second a little bit more. The car feels a little bit more stable, especially as I get back to power. Third gear cut here. Quick brake down to third. I always miss that apex. Out, use the curbing there. Turn in, use a bit of the curbing there. Pull back into the throttle. Back on the front brake. So let me try, try this again now on a flyer. Braking is right about the two, right past the 100 board. Oh, and that was really bad. Oh, that was really bad. Uh, so yeah, be careful on the curving. Uh, though with traction control, it probably won't spin the rear tires up enough to to get the back end loose. Do this in third. Yeah, I'm pushing out a little wide, so you know. That's why I don't. That's why I don't like following the the braking line there. It it compromises the the entry to the next corner onto this back straightaway. And I really want to be able to carry as much speed through there as possible. We'll do one more flyer after this and see if I can stitch a nice one together here. Here. Well, that was a little bit early on the turn in. Got to come out of the throttle a little bit. And again, that's another place I don't always follow the braking line. I want to get the car. I think for me, the, the less I have this car Trying, transferring weight from left to right as I'm trying to get back to the throttle, the better. Right? I think it's it's kind of like a point-and-shoot kind of thing. I want to get the car straight 
so I can really commit back to the throttle. Now let's see if I can get turn one here. Good. Well, I think if I use your English. And it's a very, at least for me, it's very late getting back to the throttle once you can hit apex. Again, I'm really not committing until I know I've got the car pointed straight. Again, the nice thing is the Bentley, for all of its faults, it's nice to, that it doesn't always get upset with the curbing. The other thing, if you can't tell where the start of the curbing is, there's a flash of orange there uh, from the wall on the left side that can help. A little lift, a little late on the turn in there, so just got out of the uh, throttle just for a moment. Oh, way late there. And again, without TC, you're hearing the clicking from the controller me throwing in opposite lock. Just that's what I'm needing to do to keep the car fairly straight and pointed where I need it to be. Let's push the lap out. A little bit wide there, but. That was a nice little drift through the corner there. Yeah, 142.8. Yeah, 140. Okay. So, coming down here for turn one, you'll probably be in fourth gear. Um, braking is, again, if correlating things on the track with the braking line, you're going to brake just past the, the 100 board. Um, now, there are no guarantees that 100 board is going to be there the entire race. Uh, knowing, you know, just knowing some of our antics and, and, idiosyncrasies, who knows, maybe I'll just take them all out uh, on the first lap just to mess with you. Um, the braking is a little bit past that. Uh, and other cars, I would always kind of point out that, you know, you've got the, the corner worker shack there on the other side. I'm guessing that's a corner worker shack on the other side of the wall there. Um, that's too late. So I would say, you know, if, if, you know, from where that braking line starts, if you can't see it, just know you really want to be committing to the brakes right before you get to that that shack there but unfortunately there's really nothing else that i can point to definitively saying here's here's uh, a static reference uh, on the track that you can use to brake for this corner um so again the hunter board just past the hunter board uh but definitely before you know you kind of get to that that shack there um quick on the brake you know well, quick on the brakes hard on the brakes enough to get down drop it down to third and turn in is just, and, I, and I'll pay more attention to this as I'm getting into the race, because usually I'm not really looking at where I'm turning out on the left side. I'm trying to get my eyes on the on the the, the apex for turn one. It's a late turn in, so I think where I'm where I, in watching where uh, the apex is in my turn in, I'm probably turning in somewhere right about the end of this curbing, right about where this access road is, um, and it's basically releasing the throttle. In an ideal situation, you do want to just cut this just ever just enough again, so that you're you're going to cross the white line. You're going to use the blown white curbing, but stay off the the orange sausage curb on the inside there. Um, if if you do it right, or at least if I do it right, and I got good momentum through, I'm still going to be off the throttle. I'm really not going to start rolling into the throttle until I've got the car almost all the way out and exit, and I know that I can commit to the throttle. And it's, I'm not going to go too wide on exit or I'm not going to cross over. Um, you know, I, and again, I think for me, I'm going to try and I think because Hockenheim is relatively flat, you know, compared to Laguna and well, certainly compared to Laguna, but even compared to Catalonia, um, I think I can probably get away without running traction control for this race and it won't, it won't hurt me too much, you know, you know if, if the rear tires spin up a little bit, but 
Uh, again, on exit, if if you get it wrong and you and you do find yourself out, you can cross over this line a little bit. Um, the curbing is not going to upset the car all that much. Gather it up, slowly bring it, bring it back across. Um, unfortunately, I can't test time penalties, but if you really find yourself wide out here, what I would probably do, two thought, thought processes as far as if you want to try and avoid the penalty or not. If you, if you really want to try and avoid the penalty, slow down out here before you merge back on and roll back in the throttle. Um, or the other thing you can do is stick in the throttle a little bit, and if you can handle it, as you just have come back out and run the grass. This is what I did this a couple of times at Catalonia coming onto the front straight where I got a little too wide and got you know crossed over and, and it was going to start assessing the penalty or saying hey you've gone off track. Um, what I did was I just kind of stayed out there and ran you know straddled the line and, and used the grass on the left side to kind of help slow the car down because it's not going to calculate whether you've whether you're going to incur a time penalty or not until you get back on the track. So uh, if you get out in the grass and you can kind of hold it here, feather the throttle a little bit and slowly move back on versus getting back on and then brake checking, you know, and, you know, doing a dramatic slowdown that might catch somebody out, that might, that might be the best way to do that. Um, you know, certainly out of this corner, certainly if you have issues in the hairpin. But um, something to think about, because uh, again, even, even if you're running the grass down here, you're going to gain a little bit of traction by the time you get to this access road and, and the one beyond it, or then you could probably then more easily just kind of then turn it to the right and get back on the track. So we'll see if that works or not. I'm sure I'm going to probably try that once or twice, or I'll probably go off go wide there. But anyhow, third gear up to fourth gear. Uh, I don't think we quite get to fifth. Breaking for this next hairpin. I do this a little bit differently than what the game suggests. Um, because and I think I'm still going to try and do that with this car. I'm braking for this next corner just past, it's just past the the, arm, the painted orange arm crow there, and right about, I think it's right about this axis road, just as I'm getting to it, just before the 100 board. Um, for me, it's then down, straight line braking, downshift, 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 down to second gear. When I release to turn in in second, I am going to try and, I'm going to use that, that sausage, that orange sausage curb, is kind of my reference where the apex is. So even if you look at the track map, this is a kind of a late apex corner. Now, what the game is going to suggest to the braking line is to take this and kind of extend the exit out wide to the left, and then hug, hug the inside on the next. You know, it's kind of split the difference. I, I really never liked that line because um, I think it makes it harder to take the next left hander. Uh, and carry any kind of momentum down the straightaway. So usually for this, again, it's kind of back to that. It's a left-right combo. So this turn isn't as important as the next one. The next one actually is probably the most important because it leads onto the longest straightaway on the track. So I'm going to be in second gear. I'm going to try and cut this as much as I can and stay, you know, at, at, at worst, if at worst best, you know, stay to the right of, of center. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull the back car back over where I am kind of next to the white line here as I get to the where this green access road joins the track. Um, and to bring it and really be about here to open this turn up so that I can more I can take a much smoother turn in, I can stay on full throttle. There's less chance is there's less chance of me wrenching the wheel and getting the back end to spin up or getting traction control to kick in. You really don't want traction control to to majorly cut in. Um, as you're making this turn. I'm also going to try and stay off the curving, again, just to minimize the risk of of getting the back end unsettled. Um, you know, where, for me at least, without traction control, it's going to spin up, or for you guys that run it, that it that TC kicks in. Get the car speed, but I will come out and I will flirt with the curving here. Again, nice to be in a Bentley that, you know, curving is rough. It's not quite as ridged as some of the other tracks we've been to. Um, but it's not going to it's not going to buck the car around. So you can get on that curbing a little bit and bring the car back across. Uh, heading down the back stretch here again. There's it's it's a straightaway. It's kind of curved. I I don't I don't really treat it like a curve. Where I'm going to try an apex and bring it out. I'm probably just going to probably run it about the middle. But as I get towards the Hockenheim sign here that we're going to pass under, 
I'm going to start bringing the car back to the left and setting up for the hairpin. The probably the lungiest turn we're going to run this season. Um, so for me, the braking here, as you look, you know, you've got the 150 board. You're going to brake just past that. Uh, again, as I said, it's right. The braking line is will get, start to go red just past where the blue and white curving starts. So I'm kind of using the blue and white curving. It also lines up really nicely with the the edge of that orange barrier there for the Armco. It also lines up nicely with the flag banners that are along the track. So you really want to get to the brakes as you kind of reach this point. Um, can you, if you want to try and push it a little bit and brake a little bit before you get to the green access road, be my guest. But you know, again, this is one of those, you know, I, well, who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point in the race, I'm going to take a look, I'm going to get it wrong, and I'm probably going to bop somebody in the rear at the hairpin. So just, again, as I always say, questionable racecraft. So, but again, if, if you're breaking right where this curbing starts, I think that's, you know, margin of error. If you're braking there consistently, you should, you'll probably be able to get the car slowed down plenty of time before turn in. So you actually may be able to feather the brake a little bit uh, to get it right. So for me, I think I'm going to take this in, in second gear. Um, you know, if you feel more comfortable taking it in first, I think that's fine. You'll just have to upshift a second quick uh, as you get out of the corner. Um, this is one of those, I, you know, I, I do a late turn in on this one um, if I'm by myself. Uh, and I don't, I don't have any place that I look at to say, here's why I'm turning in. I'm kind of looking at the, at the inside curving there and I'm trying not to let it go out of, out of view. And I will cut this a little bit, get the car around. And again, this is going to be another one that I'm probably really not going to be committing back to the throttle fully until I've got the car pointed down the next straightaway. Um, this is going to be a tough one, you know, uh, for me, if I don't run traction control, it's going to be very easy to spin the tires up in second, um, which maybe, maybe first is better. I don't know. Um, again, out of the corner, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. Now, as I get down, I, I take a, I don't want to call it a cheaty line, but to kind of open up this next corner, um, by myself, as soon as I kind of get to this part where this access road kind of joins and I've got a little bit more uh, pavement to work with, I'll actually bring the car a little bit, you know, I'll kind of straddle the white line a little bit, um, mainly because my turn in point for this next corner, if I do it right, is just as I get to the curbing here. And the nice thing is, is that you can hit this curbing and turn in. Back end's not really going to step out. You're already up to speed. Usually as I get to that curbing, still full throttle. If I get it right, I should be able to take this corner flat, despite what the braking line says. Um, if you do find that you've turned in too early or too late and you're thinking that you're going to go off wide, you don't have to come fully out of the throttle. It's just quick enough just to take some of that push out of the back of the car, give, give the fronts a little more grip, and the car will adjust nicely. You, you, you shouldn't need to do any major steering or throttle adjustments. But, you know, clip the inside curbing here a little bit. Use all the track on exit. Bring it out here. As soon as you get out, dark patch, start bringing it back across. Again, braking for this next corner is right just as you get to the end of uh, this curbing here on the left. If you're braking at the access road, that's probably too late. You're probably going to go wide. Um, again, here, my fifth gear down to third, I think for me is what I'm going to be aiming to, to look at. And I think I'm turning in right about, right as you're getting to the end of the, uh, of the second set of curbing here, you know, and, and if you can spot it during the race, it's probably right about where you can kind of see the pavement coloration change. So third gear. And again, ideally this is where I will differ from the, from the braking line slightly. Um, and again, this is, not saying it's quicker or slower, it's just something that I do. Um, the braking line is going to have you go all the way out to the curbing, then bring it back across, and just kind of do this nice wide S's through these next couple of corners. Uh, I think ideally for me with this car, I would prefer maybe to only bring it out half track, but try and get it back over to the left as soon as I can. Because I want to be, I want to clip the inside curbing, but I kind of want to be pointed at the Hockenheim signs straight there as I get to this curbing. Again, it's all about getting the car positioned. The, the, cur the corner we just came out of 
isn't as important as the corner here because it leads onto a, a slightly longer straight. So I, I will do, I will compromise the previous corner to try and set up a good run out of here. Um, so for me, this is third gear. As I get to the end of the curving, it, it's off the throttle. Might be a slight break, but this is one of those where I'm going to try and let the car do the work. If I do it right, I'll probably just get to the inside curving. I can start rolling back into the throttle and let the car come back all, out all the way to the left side. And I will, I'll use this curving. Again, there have been cars that we've gone on this curving and bucked it around. Bentley has no problems with it. But third gear up to fourth gear um, on, I think the last time I described when we were here in the, I think we were here in the Porsche Caymans. I described for this next corner, you're going to play chicken with the wall. Uh, as you can kind of see, the cement wall kind of weaves its way out and it juts out right at the turn in for the stadium section. So that's my turn in point. That's my braking and turn in point. I'm going to straddle the line here, play chicken with the wall. And just as I get to it, just as I get off the green, as I get here, it's a quick break, and then I'm going to start to turn the car in. It's probably going to turn in a little bit late. Um, and I've tried it both in third and fourth gear. I think for me, fourth gear works best. Uh, I think in third, you're going to be scrubbing a little too much speed. The car kind of, at least for me, the car feels like it binds up a little bit. Um, so, you know, I'll do a quick break. Probably turn in is right about, you know, where that, I don't know if that's a that's a speaker board or if it's like a, a sign board right where that board there is it's behind the the mirror but for me fourth gear if i do the turn in right it is going to be a, a late apex and i am going to try and use the second half of this curbing uh, on the inside and i'm going to use as much of as the game is going to let me roll back into the throttle still in fourth gear let the car roll out again if i if i apex too early or i'm carrying too much speed and the car is going to push I'm just going to ease off the throttle a little bit to give the front tire some grip and the car should settle in. Um, so as I'm out still in fourth gear, I'm going to bring the car back across. Uh, braking for me, what I'm looking at is, you know, I, I, the braking line is kind of a reference, but my eyes actually are looking out at the tire barriers here. So where where I'm kind of getting on the brakes is where, is where the, the, the bundles the static bundles end that are kind of wrapped in the belt there uh, and the loose tires begin. So that's about what I'm looking for for braking for this next corner. Uh, fourth gear, I'm down to third, down to second for here. And again, for the stadium, this is a nice little double apex turn. So I'll get to the inside, let the car come out a little bit. Then apex, do the second apex there, bring the car back out here. Still in second gear up to third. And again, I'm going to cut this corner as much as the game is going to let me so I can go straight over here and then I'm pointed straight over the next curbing and braking for me for this last corner is I'm looking at where this access road here where the end of it meets the track and that's usually where I'm braking uh, for this last corner down to third I'm not going all the way out to the left side probably about mid track um, and then this is usually an apex I always miss so uh, I'll probably be off this one a little bit, so that's fine, because what I'm really focusing on is getting the car out here, and I'll cross over the line, use the curbing a little bit, and set up for the last corner, still in third gear, bring the car back across, cross over the curbing here as much as I can, start rolling back into the throttle and back onto the front stretch. Um, that's what I think will work. Again, I've only done, like, before I started this, I only did, like, three or four laps just to get a feel for it. Uh, that seems to be what I'm doing right now. Uh, again, as, as I do more laps here, I'm, I might adjust things. But that's generally my intent um, uh, to get around Hockenheim. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop the test drive, and let's now, let's do the mock race and, uh, and do some questionable racecraft with that. And so based off of my practice times, I think I, I'm, I think on a good clean lap, at least right now, I'm in the 140, I want to say in the high 142s. We'll see what I, what, what I can work down to. Um, so I'm guesstimating that, you know, the lap times here is similar to what we had at, at, uh, at, uh, Catalonia. So it's about, about a minute 43, I think, 
Um, so it's a little bit quicker than, than Catalonia. So I'm going to run a 20 lap race with a quick stop and we'll see what the overall race time looks like. Um, so I would say for Thursday's race, again, it's kind of like Catalonia. It could be as, I would say, if, if you want to run a full race distance, 30 to 40 laps will probably get you in the ballpark. So uh, with that, uh, I'm not changing anything as far as the AI I'm racing against. Actually, I do want to check one thing really quick. I want to make sure uh, unbeatable limit driver. <sighs> That's half my problem. That's why I'm getting by them. I want them to be ruthless. But we're not going to limit the drive to our aggression. That will help a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to run 20 laps and let's see what happens. So yeah, so starting up front is the Forza GT division, which is what this car is in, but uh, we run much quicker than what the AI does or what the drive cars do uh, on unbeatable level. Uh, starting just after them is the prototype racing group. They'll be a little bit quicker. So nice classic uh, Can-Am and Le Mans racers. Uh, I think the GT40 and the Ferrari P4, I think, is uh, cars we've raced previously in that group. And then uh, the, these guys, these three P2 cars are definitely faster than me, but I'm hoping um, you know, that I'm my ability through traffic will make up some of that, that speed difference, but it gives me somebody to chase. Uh, and certainly if I get ahead of them and they get clear traffic, uh, maybe it gives me a little opportunity to do some uh, defense. But they're going to start right about, oh, they're going to start five seconds ahead of me, and then I'll get going here in a minute. Oh no, they're starting right ahead of me. Okay. I forgot. I forgot the delays I had for them. They started at 59, I started at 60. Alright. First time, again, cold tires. The car's going to push. So, still, still cold front tires. A little wide there. So yeah, it looks like by the time you get on, looking at the bottom right there, by the time you get onto this straightaway here, um, tires should be mostly up to 10. At least you won't have as much push that you'll recognize or you'll feel. Hmm, maybe I should be running traction control. for me through there and again I'm just trying to trying to manage the wheel spin as best I can speed I'm giving up and yeah, he's going to catch me. So I'm going to go a slightly defensive, put it in the middle of the track. Hmm. Twice I've... Funny thing is, is in, in the practice laps I did prior, even before the broadcast, I wasn't in the, I wasn't spinning up the tires as much.
I'm gonna try the hairpin in first gear next time and just Yeah, as you as you get on that that left hander onto this back stretch, you know you can you can kind of see it dips a little bit. So uh, just you, know, you guys for track control, you probably won't notice it because DC will kick in. Just be careful that you don't have so much yaw in the car that you, you only want TC kicking in just that little bit. You don't want to bog in the car down. Oops, upshift, not downshift. See, again, I can't talk and drive. Again, it's like I'm not cutting that corner as much as the line, you know, compared to the line there, but I am, I'm not going all the way out. in there, so gotta be careful. Yeah, it looks like I think you'll want to use a little bit of that exit curving in turn one. Going wide. Yep. All right, first gear this time. Yeah. If if first gear was a little bit longer out of that corner, I probably would use it. I think I just need to be better at, at managing the throttle in second. I used a little too much of that curb there.
Bitch. I think the key really is that's gonna be the hard part for me in that hairpin is is uh resisting the temptation um, to get the, get back to throttle before I've got the car fully straight. Got some clear track in front of me now. I got, got past the early pitters. And I will probably, well, I think I will take, I'll pit about halfway through. What you can do is, I've just been, oh, that's a little wide. Um, coming onto that short straight before the stadium section, you know, I'm, I'm kind of running the curbs. Uh, so what I may start doing uh, in the race, and again, just to try and keep the car as settled as possible, is if I get out that wide and get onto the curbs fine, I'll probably get off the curbs. And then as I get past them, I'll cheat over the left there before the wall, before the turn in. Uh, to set up that, that the, the right hander into the stadium section. Is it wide? Yeah, I just have to be really patient there with the throttle. Oh yeah, keep it off the curbing here. And go over there. Oop. Play chicken with the wall and the wall one.
Really, that timing line uh, right at the uh, Hockenheim sign there, you can kind of use that as a reference point of saying that's where you want to be, your exit to be, where you want to end up. As you're heading down the back street there. A little bit too late on the brakes, I had to go in a second. So again, not not in a lot of traffic. Hopefully I've been in a lot of traffic towards the end of the race, but really I, I think I think any season we do. You know, since we're all running the same setup and it really comes down to, you know, drivers, what, what kind of car they're comfortable with and the track. You really, it's really just need to have a lot of patience and, uh, and look for mistakes to capitalize on. It's tough, tough for Catalonia. And even the weird thing, I had a weird thing happen with this car. I had to run on Stu at Catalonia onto the, uh, under the front straight and and I had that arrow push happen where right on his bumper and I think I got up within like a foot or two and all of a sudden like the draft died and it, I'm gonna kind of chalk that up to like I'm guessing net code to where the game is like yeah you're close enough and, and almost treated it as if I had bumped Stu because then you know I sl my car slowed down but then he started to pull away heading into the braking zone. So I don't know if anybody else had had that happen or not, but so places where people are going to go wide or going to go off, this corner is one place people will get it wrong. Look for somebody to go wide there. Uh, definitely this next corner here. Get it wrong. Very easy to get out in the gravel. Okay, pit in. Let's see. I haven't done this in a while. So the third gear, turn in. Let's feather it again. The car's going to push a little bit if you're trying to carry speed in. Um, and the game catches you right as you get to the tires. So, I wind up all the way back down to dead last. That's okay. There's probably a lot of these guys that still have to make their pit. But also give me some traffic to work through. Yeah, so coming out of the pits, get it to second as quick as possible. Stay to the right of the line until you get to that timing line, then you can start moving back over as traffic permits. And cold tires. So tempted, so tempted to no.
I'm, I'm going off focus now. You gotta be careful here because that traffic of car is gonna be slow in turn one and they're already slow now. Down the next gear. That won't work in the race. <laughs> Blue Chaparral taking a look on the inside. We probably will have some straightaway speed on me heading down here. He didn't make any kind of pass. Ooh, careful being a little too wide there. Whoa! I caught him a little quicker than I was expecting. Trofeo. That's how I should be doing that. Must be patient, must be patient. Nice to the AI. Besides, what is it, the, the old adage, you race how you practice, or you, so I'm bashing the AI, the AI around, it doesn't help me in the race. corner better but that higher top end. Pull that one a little bit. Excuse me. starting to get a feel for the exit of the hairpin. Whoa, pink pig.
Yeah, it's not like I was on your quarter panel. Hoping is that I, I know I ran a 142.5. 30, because I think I was in traffic, or I... Hopefully I can get here. There's some of this traffic, so I can try and set a really good lap. Let's see what's possible. That one, yeah, I wasn't quite as alongside, and he squeezed me. Fair enough. Because that, that sand trap on the outside is not a place you want to end up in. Otherwise, I got the speed to get by him here. Little slide from that shell be in front of me. Nice run out of there, but he's going to outrun me on top end of here, I think. Right, yep, there's the crossover.
still there. Okay. to go. Let's see what kind of lap time I can get. Uh, well, 30 this lap regardless, but... I'm going to check tire rail really quick, because I didn't do that at all in the first half. So, uh, Or doesn't seem to be as bad here. We'll, we'll check it on the final lap, but you know, again, I'm making assumptions. If it's a 40 lap race, you know, tires may tires may get into halfway. If you wanted to try and do a run until halfway in the race before making your first stop, tires may last that long. five is possible and I do it clean. Back tires spun up just a little bit, that's why it kind of short shifted up the gear. Okay, that was a lot quicker than I was expecting. It was 42 one. And promptly dirty the last lap. So, okay. Uh, 142 one. Um, if there's additional time out there, I don't know where I would find it. Um, but I would say, again, I, as I argued in the last, uh, in the last track guide, and even, I'm not sure if I even said it during the races or practices, even if you're running traction control, you really need to try and still drive this car or use the throttle as if you don't have it turned on. Um, especially out of this corner here. So even though you have traction control turned on, you really still want to be smooth, rolling into the throttle, getting out of there. Because you, you don't want TC kicking in where it's going to bog the car down, but you do want it to kick in you know, higher up in the rev range to uh, to kind of keep the back tires in check. So, so even with TC, the throttle is not a light switch. You still just need to pull in, roll out, treat it with kick gloves. 
Oh, pushing way wide there. Missed this out. We're at 36. We're a little over 36 minutes after. Yeah, so I would say you're, we're probably looking at a 40 lap race just based off pace I'm running here in 20 laps. So that's Hockenheim. Um, I think th the nice thing about this one, again, it's relatively flat. There's not a lot of off camber turns that we've got to worry about. Uh, in fact, some of the, some of the turns, you know, we've got a little bit of banking in, in, in there, especially like you think about the, the hairpin in the stadium section. Um, you know, there's a little bit of banking that'll help. Maybe it rolls over the crown on exit, but uh, certainly I think this is a better track or, for this car than than some of the others I, my own opinion is that the flatter the track is i think the, the better it is for for the bentley I, I don't think it handles some of the elevation changes as easily so um so definitely looking forward to this race definitely looking forward to sebring i think uh at the amount of time i ran this car at that race in one of our in-between season races it's, it's a really nice car there at least in my opinion but with that um that's hockenheim uh hopefully you've learned a few things or you know either you've learned what you can try to do or you can look at what i'm doing and say i ain't doing that that's wrong um but in any case hope you guys have a wonderful christmas holiday um and you know i'm pretty sure i'll see a few of you at practice uh on on tuesday and uh, definitely for the race on thursday so merry christmas and happy racing